Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we haven't looked at a document scanner here on the channel in a while, so I figured I would check one out. This is the new Epson DS320, and it's a relatively portable document scanner. What you do here is just unlock it to unfold the paper tray here, and you can then uh, lift this thing up here and start scanning. And these things are usually very attractive to attorneys and other folks who uh, want to have a scanner with them at all times, and it's not all that large, and you can uh, easily get around with it. So we're going to check out how fast it operates, how it works, and all the other good things in between. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon buying program. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware now. This costs about $250 as you see it. It's not all that lightweight. It's about 2.4 pounds or 1.09 kilograms. So it's going to probably be heavier uh, than the Ultrabook that is in your briefcase. So just bear that in mind as you're traveling about. You might want to leave it in the car and bring it out when you need it. I like how it is put together though because they have this thing locked down so it won't accidentally open up on you unless you uh, move this little lever over to get it unlocked and open. Uh, the paper tray here will hold 20 pages and it will scan at 25 pages per minute uh, provided you're at 300 dpi or less it'll go up to 600 dpi optically so that'll go a little slower but when you're plugged in and you have these documents running through it'll uh, scan pretty quickly now you will get 20 pages into this document feeder with standard copy paper like this you know the kind of stuff you get out of your copy machine or laser printer uh, thicker things like we're going to test with later uh, will take up a little more room in here because it is thicker paper so that uh, 20 page capacity is going to be limited limited to a lighter weight paper like this. There's also a card scanner in here, which we'll test in a minute too. So if you need to scan people's driver's licenses or business cards or whatever, uh, you can run them through here, but you can also run receipts and other stuff uh, through the top feeder. Although when you're doing receipts from your local coffee shop or restaurant or something, they do recommend scanning those in one at a time. Now this does require a computer to operate, so you can't use it standalone. And about, probably about two years ago now, I reviewed a brother scanner, which I'll link to down below in the video description that uh, actually can work standalone. And it's a little larger than this, but it's also portable. And I actually kind of prefer that one, to be honest with you, because it doesn't require the computer and it can send directly into an email address or uh, to a cloud service. Now, this can scan to cloud services through the computer software. It'll support Evernote, SharePoint, Google Drive, WebDAV, and SugarSync. But uh, Evernote and SharePoint require Windows only. So on the Mac, you can only get this going over to Google Drive, uh, WebDAV, and SugarSync. And uh, there is uh, a driver package available for the Mac and for Windows, but that's it. I don't believe there's any Linux support. However, uh, this does support many of the standard scanning protocols like ISIS and uh, the other one being Twain, and you can connect it up with any software package that's compatible with one of those two scanning standards. So it is pretty uh, standard in how it approaches things. And they do give you some uh, pretty basic software in the box to play with. They have a scanning module, uh, which will scan out the PDF or to those cloud services. And they also have some OCR software from ABYY, I believe, uh, to scan in documents into Microsoft Word and other things with text recognized. On the back here, you've got a power port and a USB port, and that is it. Uh, this slot here is the output for the card as you run through. I did find, though, that you can power this just with the USB. However, it runs a lot slower, so you need to plug it in in order to get the speeds that you'll see here in a minute. USB will cut that speed in half, and I'll show you what the speed difference is when we get a little longer into the review here. Now, this is the power adapter, not all that large, but when you're thinking about a portable scanner, you have to account for uh, dragging around the power adapter with you also. There is no battery built in, uh, but you can get basic scanning done just by plugging it into your computer. So if you forget the power adapter, uh, just plugging it into your computer will be enough to get some scans going just at a slower speed. So let's boot it up and see how it works. All right, so let's start things off in the software. This is called Document Capture Pro. This is what comes with the scanner. The software also has a little memory resonant thing that uh, looks for a button push. So for example, if I put documents in right now and push the button, it would automatically scan without having to load up the software. But this is where you set up the defaults for how it works. So you can see right here, I've got my job set up as scan to PDF. If I go into the manage job settings here, it might be a little small on screen, but I'll show you what I've got set up here. It's going to do a double-sided scan from the auto document feeder. It's going to auto detect the size. We're going to scan in at 200 DPI, which is what I usually do for uh, document archiving. Uh, it's going to save it as a PDF onto the desktop. And there is one other setting that I had it do, which is to skip any blank pages that it encounters as it's scanning. So you don't get any blank pages. I'll show you an example of that in a second. So that is what I've got for settings here. I'm going to load the documents up now in the scanner and I'll 
push the button. What it does when it detects paper going in is it leaves its power saving mode. I'm going to click the scan button here and that will get the computer going. So you can see the computer says processing and now we will see the pages come through. So again, full page documents here. These are thick. Uh, very thick paper, glossy color, and it's scanning at a really nice rate of speed here. And uh, when it's done, it will spit all that stuff into the computer. And I'll click on finish here to let it know I'm done. I've got a PDF document here that I can load up. And uh, now I've got eight pages, which is basically four pages on the double-sided thing there. I put them in upside down, but you get the idea here. And you can see uh, how this came in at it as a 200 DPI scan. So it looks like it came over pretty nicely. Uh, 300 DPI shouldn't give you too much of a performance hit. 600 DPI will slow you down. Down a little bit it has to scan slower to get the better quality but uh, you can see here pretty decent performance for a portable scanner and it goes again right into the computer but you need the computer to make it work all right so now what I'm going to do is pull the power cord out so we can see how it operates without the power adapter attached so right now we are connected uh, just via USB you can see we are still in the power saving mode here so we are uh, still running with some juice into this thing I'm going to just reset the document feeder here I've got a bunch of documents now that I want to scan in and I'm going to push the scan button, but watch what happens to the speed on this one now because uh, we have the power disconnected. It's running with uh, a much lower voltage essentially going into the device. So this is the scan speed you get when you don't have the power adapter attached. So it's good at least in the sense that if you forget your power adapter, you can uh, still use the scanner, but it is going to go much more slowly and it will draw all of its power from your laptop uh, as a result. And these settings we're scanning at right now are the identical ones we just did for those color documents. So if I was plugged in right now, this would scan as fast as you saw before. But again, because we have USB powering the device now, it's going to go much slower because it's just not getting enough power to operate those motors faster. And it also has a card scanner. So I've got an expired uh, Starbucks card here. And in order to scan a card, all you got to do is flick this switch over to the left and uh, that will initiate the card scanning mode. I can stick the card in there, hit the scan button. And what it's going to do is uh, scan that card and it'll pop it out the other side here. So I'll give you a side view here as you can see. So it just uh, took the card in. It's going to scan it out and there we go. So that is how you scan the card. I will uh, switch back over to the computer screen here. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes in and you can see uh, what that card looks like. So it's able to uh, come in there and give you a pretty good ability to scan credit cards and driver's licenses and other things uh, relatively quickly. So that is the Epson DS320 and it's not a bad little device for what you're getting here. It's very compact yet it can do a large volume of scanning and do the auto duplexing where it scans on both sides of the page at the same time. I still Still, though, prefer that Brother one that I mentioned at the outset. Even though the Brother is larger and uh, doesn't scan as fast as this one does, it does do the duplexing and the Brother can operate independently of a computer, which might be a plus, especially if you plan to keep it in your office more than uh, taking it out of the office. So you can have it scan directly to a network attached storage device. That's what I do. You can also have it email documents to yourself and there are ways to link that Brother up to cloud services, again, without having to use a computer at all. This one does require the computer it can do all those things I just mentioned, but the computer has to uh, transit all the traffic out there. But if that's not a concern, this one is definitely smaller, lighter, and more portable. It can operate without any power attached at all. It can work off your laptop's battery. It does run slower at that uh, in that power configuration, of course, but it does get the job done. And as you saw, it is very, very quick when it is plugged in. So all in, not a bad little device here. A lot of people often ask me when I do these document scanner reviews if these are good for photo scanning, just given that you can load up you know, a couple photos and have them run through a lot faster than you might get out of a flatbed. And I recommend people don't do that with one of these because uh, what's happening here is you have a roller uh, underneath the little plastic thing here that is taking in those photos. There it is right there. And if you've got dust or any kind of uh, stuff on it, it might scratch the photos as they go through. So these things can scan photos. They might look okay, but you do risk damaging your photos in the process. It's really designed for paper and not for glossy photos. So uh, you have some risk there in uh, speeding up your scanning process. So I think if you are are serious about photos, you're going to have to either go to a service that might be able to do it for you faster or uh, load up a bunch on a flatbed and just kind of go one by one because these things, again, can scan a little quicker, but you might damage your photos in the process. So that'll do it for the DS320 from Epson, and this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.